The only way to the little island of Sark is by boat. Among the more recent arrivals, something called democracy. It's for the good. I think it's for the good in here. But this change for the good was a long time coming. Until recently, Sark, a British possession of about three and a half square miles and about 600 souls, was the last outpost of feudalism in the Western world. Prince Charles is the only one that's actually stayed the night. One man, known by the old French title of Seigneur, or Lord, controlled all the land based on rights granted by the original Queen Elizabeth in the year 1565. This is the last uh, holdout of, of, of feudalism in, in Western Europe. Do you, you feel you kind of let the side down a bit? <laughs> well, yes, a bit. <laughs> Under the old system, Michael Beaumont had it pretty good. He collected rents on the land and, along with the small elite, ran the place. For the privilege, he paid the British Crown the equivalent of about $3.50 a year, raising the obvious question, cash or check? Check. <laughs> it was, you might think, a recipe for revolution. Not here. If you're looking for heroic tales of a repressed population rising up to storm the barricades and demand its long-denied democratic rights, though, don't look to Sark. This place has resisted change the way it's resisted the winds and the seas. Inevitably, though, it had to give way. The irresistible force came in the form of European human rights law. One person, one vote, and all that. In a place where history moves at the speed of a horse and carriage, cars aren't allowed here, the islanders had to make a choice. After much debate, they voted for democracy by a narrow 56 to 44 percent margin. Lots of people think this is a great idea, but um, people like myself who are local, we get quite concerned because we're, we're just wondering how it's going to affect us and how much more the island will change through these changes. Sark will change, all right. It'll now be run by an elected assembly and publicly chosen officials. As revolutions go, this, this, this may be the most velvet one of them all, I suppose. <laughs> We certainly haven't had any barricades in the street or banners wandering around, no. Yet for the first time in four centuries, future generations here will be responsible for their own lives, whether they like it or not. Mark Phillips, CBS News, Sark.